What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to your full moon in Leo horoscope, astrology, energy, reading, channeling. You know the deal. You know how it goes. Uh, I'm going to bring out the chart right now and just jump right into it, okay? This, so right now we have Mercury in shadow too, about to go retrograde here in uh, another uh, week or so. And there's some pretty significant aspects going on here. Uh, so first of all, other than the North Node, the moon is the only thing that's on um, the lower side of the, of the zodiac. Well, Uranus too, okay? Um, but so a lot of this energy is on the top. Now, what, what that means is that this is all in our external environment, all right? This is all our reality shifting uh, big time, okay? With the sun, at 19 degrees of Aquarius, you know, this is, um, if you're not an Aquarius, it can be a really weird time. It's, it, but we're looking and seeing how uh, you humanitarian, humanitarianism is sort of like taking a trip to the next level, right? Because let's, let's face it, our world is in a heaping pile of shit right now. <laughs> and we need to step up and do something. And this year is basically designed to get people that are empathic, people that have a higher vibration potential in their soul to rise up into the fifth dimension and, and teach humanity how to live a new way, okay? This is us rising up into the fifth dimension and this is not slowing down anytime soon. It is bringing up all these deep, dark wounds and fears that have to do with the earth, that have to do with our own ego, our own consciousness, and it is very visceral. It's in our five senses. Okay, now uh, Mars is coming close to the galactic center. So that is the divine masculine being purified. So we had Venus uh, travel through there last November and that went, th that went through its last purification phase, if you will, as, um, uh, you know, and opened up the divine feminine, allowing, you know, humanity to receive more and to, and, and to open up in that more nurturing space. Now we have the masculine that is going through its sort of final um, purification process, going through the galactic center. All right, and that's gonna be happening here in the next week or so before it hits Capricorn where it's gonna fucking take off because Mars is exalted in Capricorn. Mars loves being in Capricorn, especially with all this other energy. It's gonna amplify things even more. So you might be thinking, oh fuck, I can't handle any more amplification. I'm already amplified enough. But this is, as it gets amplified, it's increasing our confidence. It's increasing our passion. We're getting clarity on our desires to drive forward and make shit happen, right? So um, Jupiter is now at 15 degrees. Uh, it's already halfway through Capricorn. Can you believe that? Insane. So, and it is sextile over to Neptune. And well, Black Moon Lilith is also conjunct Neptune right here. So that Lilith is retrograde at 15 degrees. Okay, so it's exactly uh, sextile to Jupiter. So this is like fantasy, like fantasy island, but it's also our dreams. So we're seeing our dreams, but Lilith can add a little bit of a dysfunctional flair to it. Like say like our vision, our dream is to, you know, like have a home on a deserted island and it's beautiful. Well, Lilith will come in here and give us a pound of cocaine and say, hey, let's do some drugs, right? We don't really want to do that. Or, you know, it might be like, you know, like hookers and blow all over the place. That's probably a bad idea. All right. The impulsive, addictive nature of it can kind of go along with the vision. But the great thing is with, with uh, Jupiter sextile Neptune is that it gives us a bigger hope, a bigger belief, a bigger understanding of the dream that we're working on manifesting. Okay. And we have Saturn moving away from Pluto now. So, you know, as Saturn moves away from Pluto, when the, the Pluto-Saturn conjunction happened, that ripped up this ground, this foundation, right? It only happened a couple weeks ago. And as Saturn moves through now, now this, this whole new level is like being pulled up by Saturn. And as it's being pulled up, it's exposing all the shit that we didn't even know was there, Right? It's increasing our need for responsibility. It's our increasing our need for emotional boundaries. It's increasing our vulnerability to increase our power, but increasing our power in a positive way, okay? So with the full moon in Leo, this is letting go of something that has to do with our heart center, 
all right, to bring in a new elevated component of that feeling. This is stuff we've been working on for lifetimes, guys, all right? So, the, you know, Leo is all about the heart. It's about leadership. It's about stepping into your power from your heart chakra. So as we end this, this era, this age of this layer of our heart chakra, it's gonna peel off another layer and allow us to dive deeper into our heart. Now, what does that mean? That means more vulnerability. That means more susceptibility. That means a deeper lo level and layer of intimacy. But with that comes fear. So it's uprooting more fear in our soul to be faced and felt and worked through so that we can become a more authentic divine version of ourselves. That requires work. This work is no joke, but it can be done and it is being done. The key is here is not to let the, let the distraction, like this vulnerability can feel uncomfortable and sometimes we wanna distract ourselves and we can't, we have to be careful of that distraction. Okay, especially with the cerebral activity is sort of meshed with the, with the intuition. And that can get a little confusing, you know, with, with you know, Mercury is debilitated in Pisces because they're just so big out there. It's so, um, like, Mercury is like, in, in Pisces, like shooting, a, shooting an elephant with a paintball gun, right? It's, it's so massive that it can get overwhelmed. So we have all these emotions flowing through us, and we're trying to make sense of it all. And, and, you know, add in Black Moon Lilith there conjunct to Neptune, this is throwing a bit of a manipulative or addictive kind of, you know, energy into the mix of this, like, I don't know where it's going, I don't know which way is up. So be careful of that. Now, we also have Venus here now at one degree of Aries. So, you know, technically, Venus is debilitated in Aries. I like Venus in Aries because I'm an Aries rising. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's in my identity. I feel more open. I feel more empowered. I feel like able to receive more. But during this full moon, it is conjunct to Chiron. All right. And that Venus conjunct Chiron is square to the North Node. So this is bringing up relationship issues that are going to project back things that you feel about yourself. Insecurities like Chiron is our deepest wound. It's in our ego at uh, the beginning of Aries. Uh, Venus is receptivity. It's our relationship to uh, love and money. Okay, so as this energy and Chiron are speaking together, square to our North Node, you know, in Cancer, okay, North Node in Cancer is all about expanding our emotional awareness and increasing, like, the strength of our emotional boundaries. But in that process, we have to get more vulnerable. So this is a very vulnerable time as it sheds a layer of our heart chakra going into our destiny, okay? But this is creating, this is molding us and the people that we're meant to be. And we do have um, Mercury trying over to the North Node. So we're, we're, we're at least understanding that we have to go through this and we're feeling pulled like a tractor beam into our destiny that is making us want to change and, and want to grow and want to mold. So we're seeking out all this information, which is beautiful. Now, we do have two sesquadrate aspects from the, from uh, the sun to the, north, to the north node and the moon to the south node. So these are past life aspects, both past life gifts and past life lessons, okay, that are, you know, so our soul is receiving this information and as it, as it brings in this higher vibration, it has to let go of this other vibration. So there's a real push-pull energy with this. And of course, Saturn and Pluto is sort of solidifying this energy. But, uh, and then of course we have Uranus trying over to the South node, which is, you know, great for also expanding our consciousness for letting go and it's semi sextile down to Chiron and Venus. So this is really getting in touch with our deeper uh, sense of self in our, in, in, in our, in our, yeah, it's going to dig up some wounds. Okay. But we've been through the work so much guys that, you know, this wound, it just, it has to go. And it's like, finally, just, just get rid of it. I don't want to fucking be here anymore. Like I'm done with this shit. Like time to go. Right. And we have Mars that's semi sextile as well over to um, exactly to Saturn. So, you know, Mars, you know, semi having sex, like there's some foreplay going on between Sagittarius and being a Capricorn 
This is good communication. This is expanding our passion and our drive to get this shit done. Like, all right, we got some work to do. We want to get it done. Let's make it happen. And while, you know, emotionally, we're like, okay, let's open up our heart and be vulnerable and get out there. This is like stepping in to your, you know, out into the world, into your passion and sharing who you are with the world, whoever wants to listen, whoever wants to know, and just being real, authenticity. This is all about becoming more authentic with yourself. So I want to draw the attention now to um, Inside Degrees. I like reading the Inside Degrees when it comes to a full or a new moon because um, the energy of the degree is relevant to the, the, the fundamental feel for what we're experiencing, okay? And this is energy is timeless. So it says a hummingbird feeding at a trumpet vine. Heightened perception, exquisitely, exquisitely poised, brilliant and fast as can be. You have the genius of seeing things, knowing things, and being there. Overflowing with destiny, destiny bounty, earned over many lifetimes. Yet, you bring all this through with a fine-tuned ability to land the situation at hand with only as much as can be worked with. You are guided to follow an extraordinary course through the world, which features the perfect opportunities to tap what is inside in so many different ways. The blessings, the grace, the heart's wonder are super full. As this way of being ripens and matures, it becomes even better. Then you begin to draw out from others the same kinds of marvelous marvels and wonders and to make it possible for the vibrancies to spread and grow with a wildfire capacity to spread good news and bring affirmative realizations wherever they are needed in generous profusion. Your, you work with ever more effortless capacity to bring this world alive. So we are bringing our worlds more alive by purging this energy. And as we dig deeper into this vulnerability, we're gonna find these nuggets of joy, of peace, of happiness, of love, love for self, love for humanity, love just for understanding the amount of suffering that's going on in the world and just wanting to give the world a big bear hug. Just, just hug me, hug me. Right? So this is really increasing the sensitivity to our heart center, our heart chakra, and, and, you know, purging out a lot of this, you know, vulnerable stuff that keeps us from being, you know, from allowing intimacy, from allowing things into our lives that we really want, but we're so fucking afraid of. Right? So have the courage to look within have the courage to feel, fucking feel it. That's, that is, well, I would make that the cover, but I, that probably won't, you know, get too far. But I'm going to make it something like that. Like, we have to feel it. Be ready to feel it because your heart's going to open up. A beautiful heart center. Thank you guys so much. Um, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like a reading from me, you can uh, message me in the comment section. You can just follow me on uh, social media at spiritual underscore bodybuilder. And other than that, I'll see you guys on the next report.